The sermon for the first week of Advent is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Uh, the sermon is entitled, Breaking the Silence. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We always realize when a new season is in our midst, when we see, and you should fill in the blank right there. Yeah, some may say when the colors of the leaves change. I'm not sure if they change here in California, but do they change? I'm, I never noticed that. Or even when the temperature starts changing, when it gets a little hot or cold, we know that a certain season has arrived. And while the other day, I had that fill in the blank moment for I knew it was a new season. Why? Because the donut told me so. That's right. <laughs> I know day after Thanksgiving, I went to the local Krispy Kreme. You might be asking, why is he going to get donuts after a Thanksgiving meal? I know, but that's just what I do. Right there, as I was ordering um, my donuts in the drive through window, I saw the picture of the new donuts that they were selling, the Santa and Snowman donuts. And I brought them home, and my daughter said, Already? Wow, I can't believe we are so close to Christmas. That's right. I thought, thought to myself, we're already there as I was looking at these donuts. And so we see the seasons change. We saw it this week, Black Friday, and tomorrow, Cyber Monday, people online. Now people in stores, everyone carrying bags, trying to find that perfect sale or that perfect gift uh, for this season. You hear, if you go to the stores, the merry tunes, the reindeers, Santa Claus, the elves, the bells, the trees, the candy canes. And there we see with all these things that the season is in full effect. And even for the church. The Advent wreath is out, the Advent hymns are on full display, the banners turn blue, the sermons of preparation and contemplation as we dwell, dwell upon why our Lord Jesus Christ needed to come for each and every one of us. And how today we begin with the triumphal entry from the Holy Scripture of St. Luke, when the people were singing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus stroving in on this donkey with cloaks laid down before him. This needed to happen, the Jesus said, and, and the king had finally arrived. Yet little did they know what was to come. But this is what the true king would deliver to them, what they needed. And that was the true, eternal, triumphant victory over sin and death. Indeed, from Zechariah 9.9, the prophecy was fulfilled. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humbled and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This was the moment where Jesus came to this world. This was how the Father's will was done. And there the people would voice the most triumph triumphant outcry as the Lord was coming to them. And as we know, when the truth comes into the world, there is always opposition. The Pharisees, of course, as we see the scriptures, were not on board. They said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. The rejecting words of the Pharisees. Some would receive while others would reject Jesus. Indeed, no surprise at all. We see throughout the Gospels, the Pharisees would try to play mastermind, or so they thought, preparing and plotting, setting traps against Jesus Christ, the one true Lord. And thus, as the Lord was entering in to be that triumphal king at the cross, where there he would crown everyone with his righteousness, lifted high upon that cross, the Pharisees said, no. 
We're not preparing for you, Lord, but rather we prepare for ourselves. We don't need Jesus, the Pharisees would say. Preparation, right? As we begin the season of Advent, this is a moment of anticipation. Think about it. A time of reflection, a time of contemplation as we dwell upon the question, what, what are we preparing for? Now, we know the obvious preparations, right? The human things, the world things, the flesh things, and yes, we know them. They are on the docket every single day as we make that mental checklist of what needs to be done on the countdown towards Christmas. But in the midst of it, how, how we can lose the meaning of this season. We lose the meaning as we hear in our ears, 20% off, buy one, get one free, limited time only, three-day sale. And I don't know how many marketing slogans there are, but they are plentiful. And you know how the world is as we're inundated by every swipe of the smartphone as we turn the page of the newspaper and there we see the world nonstop trying to prepare for this very season. And for you this day as we begin the season of Advent, where is your focus on your preparations? Is it in the Word? Ask yourself that, honestly, this very question. Where, where is your preparation? What is your focus? Is it the Word? Because we know the sinful nature. The Pharisees show that all too well in our text today. There they shunned Jesus. Their preparations were rooted in other things, human things, works merited for salvation things. And there was no need for Christ because their tradition was better. And for you in the sea of jingles and the array of all the decorations, the cold air, the eggnog, which I've never had in my life, the pumpkin spice, whatever it may be, we must continue to ask in the midst of it all, what is my preparation during this season? What am I focused on? Because you and I both know the devil, Satan, the evil foe, his desire is to silence the word of God, especially in your life. Think about it. And how does he do it? Let us count the ways. Actually, there are too many ways to count because the devil continues to throw everything at us all for the sake of trying to silence the Word of God. And how muted we become. How this silence has taken over by all the distractions. That this season becomes about the commercial. This season becomes about the world. And quickly, this season solely does not become about Christ alone. This is the nature of our sin. Silencing the word. I have more important things to focus upon, we say. Silencing the word. No, I am bored of it. I know it. I have no time for it. Silencing the word. I have other more important things to prepare for. We know this, each and every one of us, all too well. Caught up in our carnal temptations of our sin and how they become these distractions, how they define us. We saw it in the garden, the words seemingly dissipating from their hearts and minds as they were caught up in the temptations of the devil. But what the devil did not say is, without God, without Christ, there is nothing but Silence. We can prepare all we want in this world, but without Christ, there is nothing but silence, void, eternal darkness, no hope at all. Yet our Lord says, He says to the Pharisees, He says, I tell you, if these were silent, 
the very stones would cry out. See, Jesus, he breaks the silence. Not just human silence, but the silence that is had from sin and death. Because without Christ, we are silent. There is nothing to say for ourselves. We cannot account, answer, or justify on our own behalf because there is nothing to say but I, a poor, miserable sinner. There is nothing more to say in regards to ourselves. Our Lord breaks the silence. He breaks it. He is so victorious and triumphant that he tells the Pharisees, even the stones will cry out. Have you ever seen a stone? They're round sometimes, but you very well know that they're just kind of there. even in the midst of rejection. Jesus, he went on this very road for our silent hearts and minds. And he fulfilled it for you. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. It is Jesus who comes to prepare and deliver you his peace. Our Lord breaks the silence. Because there is no other who can break that silence for you except Jesus Christ alone. And that silence is broken by reconciling you to God. That silence is broken by answering for you. That silence is broken by accounting, advocating, and giving you his peace. And this peace is Christ's. The cross for each and every one of you. That the silence is broken by the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Our guilt silences us. Our shame, our every sin, we have nothing to say for ourselves. But Jesus has something to say. He says, It is finished. His blood shed on the cross silences our most greatest critic, our most ferocious accuser. Not only does he silence him, but he crushes his head. And that is the devil. The Lord conquers the evil foe all by way of the cross. This word is so important for each and every one of us because we know the chaos that we live in. But here we are in the word of Christ, the word that grants to each and every one of you the greatest rejoice, greater and sweeter than any other gift. Because Jesus breaks the silence for you. We're there with a triumphal outcry. By faith we had sung this day, the Savior of the nations have come. The heavens and the earth marvel at this glory. And from the truth in the virgin's womb to the manger, this newborn would be to run the course. The word made flesh to be our sin, to be our Savior, to break the silence so that we together right now can rejoice and say the words, Jesus is the Christ. It is finished, the Son of the living God. peace of Christ were there three days later. The graves were opened. The resurrection, 
Victory was delivered for each and every one of you. Triumph is your true status. This is who you are. You are the triumphant people of God. Because by that open tomb, your mouths open with great boldness and assurance as you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. No longer are we caught up in the separation of silence from God. No. But in Christ, he has come to you. Blessed who comes in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, he will save people from your sins. And that what he, that's what he has done for you. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Peace is yours. You are with God, covered by his blood. I know, as I said earlier, that the donut, the donut might have sparked this season for me. But even more, it is the stones that tell us so. This is who we are. We are that stone. But our Lord, he gives us the great rejoice and outcry. No longer are you dead, but you are alive. No longer are you riddled with guilt and sin, but now you are absolved. No longer are you stuck in your shame, but now resting in the promise of Christ. No longer are you caught up in this world as if you think this is everything to you, but rather now you abide in his very word. Because the silence has been broken. Jesus breaks this silence for you. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as you are able.